Hello, mic test, mic test, one, two, one. Mic test, one, two, one, two. Mic test, one, two. How's that? Is it good? Okay, that's, yeah, I can hear. Mic test, one, two, that's good. That's fine.
membership. We are so glad that you're here, whether in person or online. Welcome home. Now, if you are visiting us for the first time, whether in person or online, then we want to connect with you. Um, if you're visiting us online, then we encourage you to connect via the chat. Just let us know that you're here so we can, um, so we can encourage you and bless you. And of course, if you're here, just contact it, pretty much any one of us. Let us know that you're, that, that you're here because we want to physically and personally welcome you today. Um, now, we want to thank you for continuing to observe our safety protocols. You know, we are towards the end of this pandemic. Uh, we are, you know, seeing light at the end of the tunnel. But until, um, until we establish some, some full set of policies here, we want to continue to just keep our masks on, maintain our social distancing, that type of thing. We, remember, we do this not only for the safety of ourselves and for others, but also for the comfort of our safety and others, because some people, they don't feel comfortable, you know, uh, removing the mask quite just yet. So we thank you so much for keeping those masks on. Thank you so much for practicing social distancing. Thank you so much for visiting the hand sanitation station in the back and, and, and just practicing and observing all of those things. Now, I do want to call your attention to one thing this morning. Um, we have something new, but not new. It's new in the last six weeks, but it's not new because we did it before. At the end of each aisle, we have some attendance sheets. And so we want to record your presence here. Um, just be sure and fill out your name. And if, you, if anything has changed, your phone number, et cetera, just be sure and fill that information out so that we can record your attendance because we want to know that, that you are here with us this morning. Uh, it is a wonderful day to worship. At this time, I ask you to all rise as we lift up our hearts and our voices to the Lord. Hello, hello, okay. Hello, good morning, everyone. It's glad to be here in the house of the Lord. Uh, I know I'm not Erica. <laughs> um, so today we're gonna do, I guess we're gonna do some praise and worship. Uh, feel free to clap, raise your hands, and just let's just praise the Lord, okay? is beating you have rescued me sing it out jesus is alive the empty cross the empty grave life eternal you have won the day shout it out jesus is alive he's alive oh happy day Day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day. I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. When I stand in that place, free at last, me. joy, perfect peace, earthly pain finally will see, celebrate, Jesus is alive.
So let's go ahead and continue our praise and worship. we just continue that chorus with no music we cry holy 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 can we just sing that once and i'm gonna hold the microphone way down here because my voice is not that good um let's just do that right now for a few moments we cry holy 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 we cry holy holy
Well, Father God, that is our prayer this morning. Our, we cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb, because you are worthy to receive it. The Bible says in Revelation that every tongue, tribe, people, and nation will be gathered around the throne singing unto the Lamb, crying out, holy, holy, holy. And that is what we do this morning. God, we thank you for this, for this time of worship because, Father, it is, it is all about you and it is not about us. And so, Father, I thank you for the people who have showed up here in person and online to worship you with their hearts and their voices because it is all about you. So this morning, as we continue our worship, my prayer, Father, is that you would just continue to, to bless this time. Continue to bless this time of worship. Bless our study of your word. Bless our fellowship with one another. Bless our, our offering. Bless every, every aspect of today's service because it is all for you because you are holy, holy, holy. God, we love you so much and we praise you and we dedicate this time to you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, now is the time of the service when we continue our worship by greeting one another. And so we're going to have some music. We're just going to, you know, kind of wave at one another. And, you know, you, you, know, you know what we do. So let's greet one another in the Lord. Now is the time to serve so we continue our worship through our prayers and our praises. Uh, the, we are a worshiping church. We are a praying church. We believe in the power of prayer. And so what I want to do is just if anyone has any prayer requests this, this week, please let us know because wanna, we want to lift them up before the throne room of God. I'm keeping my mask on because I'm going to head out there right now and I'm going to see uh, what prayer requests you have. We also want praise reports. You know, we are encouraged by the wonderful things that God does in our lives. And he does so much. He does so much in our lives every single day. And so we want to acknowledge those. We want to give him the, the praise and glory due his name for those things. So if you have any praises that you'd like to share this morning, then I encourage you to do that as well. Yes, ma'am. Let me go back here for you. Praise God for being here this morning. And I when I asked prayer for my sister, Adalia Ramirez, uh, I had asked for a request about a month ago. She had back surgery. And she came out okay, but she's fallen twice already in this past week. And uh, she, she doesn't have any on her legs. So I asked prayer for her and my family. Adalia. Adalia Ramirez in the Villarreal family. Lord, hear our prayers. Any others? Yes, sir. I'm, I'll head over there right now. Yes, sir. I want to praise God for all the uh, support I got this past week. I had a procedure. Uh, I want to thank my wife, my family, DHR, 
uh, they took very good care of me, and I'm, the stone has been removed. And uh, <laughs> other procedures that I had came out very well. So I praise God for that. And this is a united church in prayer. I believe that sincerely. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any others this morning? Well, I praise God because he is worthy. Amen? Amen? I praise God because we have another day of life. We have another day to praise his name, another day to lift up our hearts and our voices to him. Just one more. We have one more, it looks like. for all the seniors, high school seniors especially, uh, that will be traveling. Um, I know our own grandson will be uh, flying out to Florida this week after he graduates, and I just pray travel mercies on all of them and uh, uh, just blessings on them. <clears throat> well, if you would join me in prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for today, God. We thank you just first and foremost for who you are. We thank you for just your great love for us, your mercy and your grace for us, Lord God. We thank you that you are the one who brings comfort and healing in your wings. We thank you, God, that you are our healer. And so there are, just, there are a few uh, prayer requests we want to lift up before you this morning. I want to continue to lift up um, Adat. Adalia Ramirez, or Adelia, I'm sorry, and, and her family, you know, for the post-surgery and for the falling. Lord, we just pray that your blessing upon her, we just pray that you would just continue to, to comfort her, to lead her, to guide her, to just to, to, to help her in this difficult time, and, and, and just help her family as well, Lord. Just may your comforting presence be with her, and just bring her the joy that comes from your presence. God, we want to lift up Erica, who's not here this morning. Um, just bless her wherever she's at and God, uh, in, in, in her need. We want to uh, lift up the Middle East, God. Continue to lift up the Middle East and the, and the, the troubles that are happening out there. Um, the, the, your word says that we are to continually pray for peace in the Middle East. And so that is our prayer this morning. We praise God, Lord. We praise God for the, for the victories. We pray God for the stones that have been removed. Hallelujah. We praise God for the seniors. Um, that are graduating and are traveling. We pray traveling mercies for them. Lord, we just thank you again. We thank you for another day to lift up and to worship your name because you are worthy to receive it. And we are so joyful to be in your presence. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, now is the time of the service. We continue our worship through our giving. If I can have the ushers come forward. <clears throat> We need the offering plates. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's let's have let's bless the offering this morning. Well, Father, we thank you for the privilege of giving. We thank you for the blessing of giving. We thank you, God, that when we give, we exercise our faith and we participate in the work of your kingdom. This morning, we ask that you would bless the offering that it would be used for you, for your glory, that it would be used for your mission work in this community, in this neighborhood, in this city, in this uh, area that we live in. God, we love you so much, and we, um, we, we dedicate this offering to you. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.
I'm excited because I love to preach and teach about the Holy Spirit. Keep it simple. Don't read too much. You don't want to confuse anyone. You don't want to bore anybody. You don't want to lose their attention. But I'm the opposite. I want you to know what you're reading and why you're reading it. Sometimes that can happen in a couple verses, but most of the time it doesn't. Sometimes you have to read a lot before you kind of understand what's going on. And so today, a good chunk of my sermon it's, it's straight from Scripture. I want to allow the text to speak for itself. This morning, I'm going to be reading from one of my other favorite Bible translations, the, the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible. I'm going to be reading from Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Then I'm going to read Acts chapter, the same chapter 1, verses 8 to 14. That alone is nine verses. Then I'm going to read Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 43. That's 52 verses all together. And I'm not going to lie, that's a lot. That's a lot for church. <laughs> but the reason I'm doing this is because I believe the word of God is living and active. And it speaks volumes more than I ever could. And I believe as we listen to this story this morning, we're going to be absolutely amazed at the work of God. So before we begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask him to bless our time together and bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Well, Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for just another day of life, another day uh, that you've allowed us the opportunity to breathe out our praises and thanksgiving to you for, for who you are, for all you've done, for all you do, and for all that you continue to do. Thank you for the privilege of gathering together this morning to worship you together as one body of one accord, of one purpose, to bring glory to you in all that we do. God, today we ask you to bless our time together. Keep us from distractions this morning. Keep us from anything that would hinder our attention and understanding of your word. If we've had arguments or disagreements or things we're angry about that are occupying our minds today, may we lay those things 
at your feet this morning. If we have doubts or questions in our hearts and our minds that may, that may keep us from hearing from you, then we give those doubts and questions to you, expecting and trusting that you'll hear us, that you'll answer us, and that you'll deepen our faith in you as a result. God, as we look at this, at a pretty long passage this morning, we pray that you'd bless the reading of your word. We pray that today, as the scripture is read, that we'd listen attentively and with purpose. I pray we would understand the story with no confusion, that we'd follow the narrative with ease. I pray that the message you have for us today would penetrate our hearts and minds, that it would forever change us. May our hearts be set afire with the burden to tell others about the good news of Jesus Christ as we hear this morning about how we are empowered to preach. It is in Christ's name that we pray this morning. Amen. Well, as I mentioned a moment ago, we're looking, the text we're looking at this morning comes from Acts chapters 1 and 2. Our first text comes from Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Then we're going to 8, verses 14. If you have your Bibles, of course, I always invite you to turn there with me. And if you don't, we have it up on the screen. Beginning in verse 4, the text reads as follows. It says, while he was with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father's promise, which, he said, you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days. Going down to verse 8, Jesus told them a little bit more about the Holy Spirit. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up as they were watching, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing into heaven, and suddenly two men in white clothes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This same Jesus who's been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way that you've seen him going into heaven. <clears throat> Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they arrived, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. They were all continually united in prayer, along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Now, we're not going to get very much into this portion of Scripture this morning. We did that a few weeks ago. Um, the main reason I wanted to reread it today was simply to give you some context. Here in this passage, Jesus was about to ascend to the Father, and he's told his followers to wait. He told them not to leave Jerusalem. Instead, he wanted for them to wait for the promise of the Father. He said that in just a few days, they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But they're to wait. Now, remember, we talked about this the very first week. The disciples had already received the Holy Spirit. The Spirit had been breathed upon them by Jesus. Uh, the Spirit had already indwelt them for their salvation. But now, Jesus told them to wait because something more was coming. He said, in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, what did that mean? Jesus explained it to them and to us in verse 8. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. You know, a few weeks ago, I talked about the different prepositions that are used in Scripture to describe the Holy Spirit. I said that when the Holy Spirit is described as being in a person, it means that person is a believer, and the Holy Spirit indwells them, leading them and guiding them in the path they should follow. I said that when the Holy Spirit is described as being with a person, then that typically refers to unbelievers. The Holy Spirit does his work of convicting them of sin, drawing them to the Father, pointing them to Jesus. I also said that when the Holy Spirit is described as being upon a person, that is when the Holy Spirit endues them with power. And this is what we see here. Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit comes, they would receive power to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. But first, they needed to wait. And that's exactly what they did. Verses 12, 13, and 14 say they returned to Jerusalem. They went to the upper room, and they waited. And they prayed. Acts 2 tells us what happened when they followed the Lord's instruction, beginning in verse 1, straight through to verse 43. 
this is what the text says. Now just sit back and listen to this amazing story. It says, when the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all gathered together in one place. Suddenly a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were staying. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and rested on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were Jews staying in Jerusalem, devout people from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and amazed, saying, look, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us can hear them in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites. And visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the magnificent acts of God in our own tongues. They're all ast astounded and perplexed, saying to each other, what, what does this mean? But some sneered and said, well, they're, they're drunk on new wine. Now, this is where we left off last time. We talked about how the Spirit fell upon the believers and empowered them to be the church. He empowered them to go. This morning, we're talking about how the Spirit fell upon the believers, and he also empowered them to preach. Continuing our passage, it says this. It says, Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, Fellow Jews and all you residents of Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and pay attention to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's, it's only nine in the morning. On the contrary, this is what happened this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And then he quotes from Joel's prophecy. He says, and it will be in, that, in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all people. Then your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. I will even pour out my spirit on my servants in those days, both men and women, and they will prophesy. I will display wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. He concluded his quote of the prophecy and then he continued on to the crowd. He said, fellow Israelites, listen to these words. This Jesus of Nazareth was a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs that God did among you through him, just as you yourselves know. Though he was delivered up according to God's determined plan and foreknowledge, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. God raised him up, ending the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by death. For David says of him, and then he quotes from the Psalms, Psalm 16, written by David, it says, then, for David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before him because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. Moreover, my flesh will rest in hope because you will not abandon me in Hades or allow your Holy One to see decay. You've revealed the paths of life to me. You'll fill me with gladness in your presence. There the psalm ended and he continued he said, brothers and sisters, I can confidently speak to you about the patriarch David. He's, he's dead and buried. His tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him to seat one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah. He was not abandoned in Hades. His flesh did not experience decay. God has raised this Jesus. We are all witnesses of this. Therefore, since he has been exalted to the right hand of God and has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, he has poured out what you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended into the heavens, but he himself says, and he quotes David again, the Lord declared to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Then he returns. He says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know with certainty that God, he has made this Jesus whom you crucified, 
both Lord and Messiah. The text tells us, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he testified and strongly urged them, saying, be saved from this corrupt generation. So those who accepted his message were baptized in that day, about 3,000 people were added to them. Verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe. Many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Verse 47 says, every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. God bless the reading of his word. Now, that was a powerful sermon, amen? Every time I read that sermon, I get chills. Because the apostle Peter, he didn't hold back. He boldly proclaimed the gospel to the crowds. He told them straight up. He said, this Jesus, God showed you who he was. His identity was confirmed to you through his signs and miracles. David, he's dead and buried. But Jesus, he's resurrected. You saw it. This was no ordinary man. This Jesus whom you crucified is Lord and Messiah. The text tells us when he preached this message to them in boldness that 3,000 people came to faith that day. 3,000. And honestly, I think there were probably more than that. Because back then in those days, the people who did the counting, they didn't count women or children. So I think there was more than 3,000 who came to faith that day. What I want you to know from all of this is that all of that was a result of the power of the Holy Spirit upon Peter. All of that. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You know, believers in the Pentecostal tradition, they like to refer to this phenomenon that we just read about as the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Some disagree. Some say it's simply the coming of the Spirit for the first time in the new era of the church. But I I believe this absolutely was a baptism. I mean, Jesus himself said it. (laughs) You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit in just a few days. The difference in what I believe about this passage from what many Pentecostal believers believe is that they would tell you that the evidence of this experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. Now, I do believe in the gift of tongues. Now, I believe that many legitimately exercise this gift today. But I don't believe tongues are the sign of the baptism of the Spirit. I believe the true sign of the baptism with the Holy Spirit is boldness to proclaim the gospel. We are empowered to preach. Jesus said we would receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we will be his witnesses you know, the Apostle Paul, the man who just stood up in front of thousands and delivered this powerful and fiery sermon, the man whose word Scripture tells us led to the salvation of 3,000 plus people, this was the same man who just weeks before had cowered in the presence of a servant girl when asked if he knew Jesus. Do you remember the story? In Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 to 74, Scripture tells us that Peter was sitting outside the courtyard. When a servant girl went up to him and said to him, you were one of those with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Later, out by the gate, another servant girl noticed him and said to those standing around, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it, this time with an oath. "I I, I don't even know this man, he said. A little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, You must be one of them, but we can tell by your Galilean accent. Peter swore, a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. And immediately, the rooster crowed. Just a few weeks prior, Peter vehemently denied Jesus in the flesh. But now, in the spirit, he is boldly proclaiming the gospel to crowds of witnesses, and thousands are being converted 
as a result. We are empowered to preach by the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you don't need to stand up in front of crowds of thousands, but you do need to be prayed up and ready to proclaim the good news of Jesus whenever the need arises. Whether in the workplace or in school or at the grocery store, at the park, wherever we go, we need to be ready. In his second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5, the Apostle Paul said this. He said, I solemnly charge you before God and Christ Jesus is going to be judged the living and the dead. And because of his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires will multiply teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. They'll turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to myths. But as for you, as for you, exercise self-control and everything. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Now these words, they were written to Timothy, but they could just as easily be written to any one of us. You know, we are called to proclaim the good news of Jesus in season and out of season. In a world in which teachers pop up on every station, every news feed, every corner, telling people what they want to hear instead of what they need to hear, we need to be ready to preach the word, to correct, to rebuke, to encourage, because people's eternities depend on it. My prayer for each of you is that you would study your scripture, that you would meditate on it, that you would let it marinate within you, that you'd hold it close to your heart and allow it to penetrate your soul, transforming you more and more into the image of Christ with every passing day. And then just go out and start telling everyone about this wonderful gift that you have. What did the woman at the well do when she had her life-changing encounter with Jesus? She'd been called out for her seven husbands. He said, you've been married seven times, and the person you're living with now is you're not even married to. She'd been called out. He didn't pull any punches with her. He told her the truth about who she was, but then he offered her the wonderful gift of his living water, and her life forever changed. And then she went out and told everyone with whom she came in contact, come and see about a man who told me everything I've ever done. She couldn't hold it in. What did the deaf man do in Mark 7? Jesus healed him and told him not to tell anybody. What did he do? He told everybody. <laughs> what did Jeremiah say about keeping the truth of God locked away in, his, in our heart? He said he couldn't do it. Jeremiah 29, 20, verse 9 says, I say that I won't mention him or speak any longer his name, but his message, it becomes a fire burning in my heart, shut up in my bones. I become tired of holding it in. I, I just, I cannot prevail. And after Pentecost, Jesus left 12 men behind to spread his gospel, and these 12 men turned the world upside down. Now, these weren't perfect men. They were very imperfect. They had their issues. You know, we just read about one of them who denied Jesus three times and cowered before a little girl. And yet, through the empowerment of the Spirit, these men changed the world. And why? Why is the modern church not more like this? Why do people, like the Pentecostal theologian I mentioned at the beginning of the message, say that Christianity has become powerless to heal? powerless to free people from their wounds, powerless to bring about real life change, I'll tell you why. It's because we're not tapped into the power of the Holy Spirit that is promised to us and to our children and to our children's children. It's because the modern church is too busy walking in the comfort of their salvation instead of walking in the discomfort of their neighbor's damnation. We live in a world that is full of people who are perishing. The Bible says that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So we must pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest. Will you be one of those laborers in the field? 
Will you join me on God's rescue team sent out to save the world? Will you help me to rescue people from their religions of do's and don'ts? Their religions that lie to them by telling them that their participation in empty rituals and repetitive prayers gets them to heaven? Will you help me to share with others about the life-changing free gift of God's grace and forgiveness available to them through, our, through Jesus Christ, our Lord? Will you help me to set people free by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to all those around us? Preaching is not just for the preacher. The preacher is for preachings for everyone who professes Jesus Christ as Lord. Will you join me? You know, I read just this week about a church that at the end of their service, instead of saying that their church was dismissed, they said that their church was sent. And from now on, that's how I want to end our services. You know, we are a sent people of God. We are sent to go out into the world to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. My prayer is that we would fulfill that commission. And so this morning, as I conclude my message, my prayer for all of you will be that you are empowered of God, truly empowered, baptized with the Spirit, that you may go out and fulfill the mandate that you've been given to go out and to preach. And if you desire that today, then I encourage you to do what Jesus commanded in Scripture. Wait. Wait on him. Seek him. Pray to him. God promises to give to those who ask. You know, after this pandemic, the world is never going to be the same. Normal is never going to come back. But guess what? Jesus is. And so until that time comes, we must proclaim his gospel to everyone we can. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Well, Father, I believe this morning's message was an important one for all of us to hear today. Your word says that the very gates of Hades will not prevail against your church. And so we know that you've created and mobilized us to make a difference in this world. And, and yet all too often it just seems as if we are in a losing battle with the ruler of this world. It seems like the culture around us is going crazy. Good is being called evil. Evil is being called good. We feel like we are increasingly becoming the minority in this world. It seems as if we are powerless to change anything. And yet, that's exactly the same world the disciples found themselves in 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. They're hidden away in a room waiting for your promise, waiting to hear from you, waiting for something they probably never experienced. But God, we do know what to expect. We do know all about you and your empowering spirit who promises to equip us with all that we need to make a difference in this world. God, we want to be a part of your army. We want to be a part of your workers in the field reaping a harvest of souls for you. We need you and we need your empowering spirit today and every day. And so God, this morning on this Pentecost Sunday, we pray that you would send the fire. We pray that you would send the Holy Spirit fire to rest upon us, those here in our sanctuary, those watching online. We want you to empower us by your spirit, baptize us with your spirit, send us out that we would experience the richness of your destiny in you as we go out and proclaim your mercies to everyone with whom we come in contact. May our lives overflow with you. May our lives overflow with our love for you. May our love for you be what compels us as we go out and preach the good news of El Messias, not the church, but the person. This world needs you, and we want to be the ones who point them to you. Bless us today that we would do just that. May we turn this neighborhood and this city and this valley upside down for you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go change the world. Amen? Amen. Well, would you please rise? At this time, we're going to sing our concluding hymn, I Surrender All.
Father, let's pray. Father God, we, that is our prayer. Our prayer is that we would surrender all to you this morning, this morning and every day of our lives, God, because you are worthy. Like we, we, our hearts overflow with thanksgiving for all that you are, for your great love for us, for your mercy, for your grace. And so, Lord, we surrender our everything to you today. We surrender our personal wants and desires in favor of you because because you are all that matters. May you use us today and every day for your glory as we surrender our lives to you. May you fill us with your spirit and empower us that we would go out to do the work of your kingdom. God, we love you this morning and we, we bless your name. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I have just a few announcements for you today. The first one, of course, is Bible study begins in just a few weeks, June the 2nd. We're going to be starting on Wednesday night, June the 2nd. It's going to be at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We're studying the Jesus you may not know. I, I always love those. I think, I think there's a part of every one of us that usually likes those studies that kind of teach us new things. And so I'm excited about this study because I'm looking forward to learning some things that I, you know, maybe I don't know about Jesus. And so, so I'm excited. It's going to be Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We encourage all, all of you, all of you, I would love to see a packed house on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. We encourage you come be a part of that. Also, on Sunday, June the 6th, we are going to uh, be 
celebrating our graduates. And so if you have a graduate in your home, before we were saying seniors and college students, but you know what? If you have kindergartners graduating, if you have fifth graders graduating to middle school, you know what? We want to, we want to celebrate everyone. So we encourage you to submit your photos. Um, the deadline to do that is May the 30th, so please send that in. Um, it's really small. And MCSUMC mission at gmail.com. That is the email. So if, we encourage you to send those photos in. And of course, if you can wear a cap and gown that day, then we encourage you to do that as well. So, and then, and then the last announcement I have is, you know, I've been issuing a call to serve for the past several weeks, and I just want to continue to encourage you to do that. You know, we are the body of Christ. We need every single one of you um, in order to function, in order to, to accomplish the mission of the kingdom. And so I want to encourage you all, you know, if you're interested in serving in any capacity, please let us know. Actually, in the back, we're going to have a, a little yellow, I think it's a yellow tablet. We're going to have a little yellow tablet out there so you can put your name, phone number, and your area of, of ministry interest that you'd like to serve in. We, ushers, greeters, um, I mean, the, we have all kinds of ministry areas, and there may be even some that I haven't even thought of that you want to do. And if you want to do, hey, that's wonderful. We want everybody to serve. So as you go out today, we encourage you to, to sign up. Sign up for an area of ministry to serve because we want to be a church that continues to have a lasting impact in this community even years after we're gone. Amen? Amen. Well, let's rise for the benediction. The book of Acts tells us that we would receive power when the Holy Spirit is upon us and that we will be God's witnesses to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And my prayer for you is that you would go out empowered by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit of the resurrected Christ, empowered by the Spirit that fell upon his church on the day of Pentecost to go out and to be his witnesses to this world. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.